Are you sure about this? If the body was warded against scrying, it's probably warded against necromancy, too. There could be all kinds of magical booby traps just waiting for us to activate them. I know what I'm doing. I'm not an amateur. I've done this before, you know. <laughs> you better be right about this. Mirren took that as permission to go ahead and began the ritual. It was simple and vulgar, and not nearly as repellent as Rhea had expected. Mirren ran through the ritual with a speed and ease that suggested he'd done it many times before. Rhea made a mental note to look into that. Even the dead were entitled to privacy. Oliver Lando, hear my words. By the power of this ritual, by agreements entered into with the powers and dominations, I command you to rise and speak with me. For a long time, nothing happened. Then, shadows swayed disturbingly across the morgue's walls, though there was nothing present to cast them. Rhea looked at Mira questioningly and then jumped back as the corpse sat up. It slowly turned its destroyed head and looked at Mira with its blind eyes. Who calls me? Who disturbs my rest? I called. I conjure and command you. Do you remember your name? I remember. Send me back. I should not be here. Answer my questions and I shall release you. Did you see the face of your murderer? There was a new presence in the room. Something old and sickening. Rhea backed away another step. The corpse ignored her. Its attention fixed on Mirren. The jaw settled comfortably into place, and a slow smile spread across the dead man's face, cracking and splitting the dead man's lips. Pinpoints of light glowed where the eyes had been, and two thin plumes of smoke curled up from the ruined eye sockets. Little man, you should not have called me here. I am old, powerful, potent far beyond your feet. I shall tell you the secrets, dark and awful truths that will destroy your reason and sear your soul. You're not Oliver Lando. Who are you? Speak, I command you. You have no power over such as I. 